Hi, my name is Jaden, and this is Living with CCI. I started this video series a couple months ago. Um, apologize for the long gap. I had uh, some things came up, and I also just became very good at procrastinating. But I finally got over that and decided it was time to get back to it. Um, so here I am. Um, I would like to talk this video a little bit about living with CCI, which is the whole point of the of the series. Um, I found that I I got uh, into a lot of detail about my history, sort of how I was diagnosed, um, the various different treatments that I got, and different medical care that I received over the years. Um, and th there was just a lot to say, so more than I thought there was. Um, and it seems people enjoyed listening, so I was I was quite pleased with that. That you know, it's hopefully useful to somebody because it was a lot to go through, and I'm sure you've all been through something similar as well um, in whatever uh, flavor of CCI that you're dealing with. So a little bit of background, um, CCI, if you don't know, stands for craniocervical instability. It's uh, basically a problem with the ligaments in the upper neck um, that connect the upper two vertebrae and the head. So that's why it's cranio, which is the head, and cervical, which is the neck. Um, it's a spine problem essentially, um, but it's an unusual spine problem because the C1 and 2 vertebrae, which are the, the top, the upper most two vertebrae, um, there's no disc in between them. So it's, it's a spine problem that does not involve a disc, which is, you know, you hear about people with back problems or, you know, neck problems in the lower neck or the mid neck. It's, it's quite often there's a disc degeneration, which is sort of a naturally current thing, you get older, wear and tear, like the discs get drier and, you know, there's less spacing between the vertebrae. The discs serve to kind of cushion the, uh, the different levels of the spine from impact and just the, you know, the things that you go through in a, in a human life. Um, but at the upper neck, there's no uh, disc. So you have um, two very special vertebrae that actually give you half of your range of motion of your head. So they're really important. Um, and they're basically there's the C2 vertebrae, which is, I call the, the peg, uh, and the C1 vertebrae is kind of like the ring. And so the ring rotates around the peg. That's how you're able to turn your head like left and right cervical rotation. Um, and then there's a joint that, um, between the head and the C1 vertebrae that allows you to kind of nod like that. So it gives you that range of motion. So that joint, being as there's no disc, um, it uses a, a series of strong ligaments in order to hold everything together. So holding the head on to C1 and holding C1 on to C2 and allowing it to move, you know, to go through 50% of its range of motion. So these ligaments are really important. Uh, and CCI is essentially a condition where the ligaments aren't working properly. Um, and it can range from just like in my case where I have pain and I have some nerve issues um, to people that are very debilitated uh, and disabled um, because it's actually affecting the function of the spinal cord and all the other things that go on at the junction of the head and the neck. So uh, basically, yeah, the ligaments can either be uh, loose or what they call, they, they say they have laxity, which means the ligament just moves more than, a normal, than it normally should. Um, or there can be damage or a tear in the ligament. So, um, so that's basically what it is. Um, and there really isn't a cure for it. Um, you can get a fusion surgery, which um, some people need. Um, that's where they'll actually make the ligaments redundant because they will just put in hardware, screws and bolts and everything else, and they will fuse the vertebrae together and including the head. So you actually get your head fused to C1 and 2, and in some cases lower, depending on your condition. Um, so it's something I talked about in one of my last videos, uh, as far as like talking to surgeons about, you know, what this would actually involve and whether it would be something, you know, I would be even a candidate for, um, I'm not. Uh, so if you're out there and, and you know, you're kind of going through this and you, you know, you hear about this scary surgery, um, definitely educate yourself on it. I mean, be aware of, you know, it as an option. Uh, it does help people. Um, but my understanding from doing the consults are the surgeons that do this uh, fusion um, at the upper neck to the head. There, um, there aren't very many, first of all. There aren't very many surgeons that do it, and there aren't very many surgeries done. 
And if you learn about sort of evidence-based kind of medicine, that's kind of a really big problem. You need a large N number, a big sample size to really show if something's effective, if it's really helping people. Um, and when you don't have that, it's really hard to say. Uh, and so then it goes down to kind of anecdotal, um, you know, evidence and, you know, individual case studies and things. So, so the surgery is out there. Um, it's, it's hard to, um, uh, to get the consults again, cause there aren't very many doctors doing them. And, um, the surgeries themselves are very, uh, complicated, uh, as you can imagine, you've got so much up there, uh, lots of different, like you've got the flow of blood, you've got the spinal cord, you've got the, the, the b bottom part of the brain and you've got your neck and all of that, like you want to come out of that, in a hopefully a better condition than you went into the surgery. So in a case like mine, you know, I was just told like, no, like, you know, you're it, the big thing was that I'm working. Uh, so I am still working uh, with my symptoms and I'm going to talk in this video a little bit how, how I manage that. Um, and the other thing is I don't really have any of the, what I'll just term bad symptoms. I mean, pain is obviously bad. Nobody wants to be in chronic pain, um, but a lot of people are. And, and, it, and I'm going to, I guess, speak in this video how I sort of made that transition from chasing treatment to make me better and hopefully like make this go away to kind of living with the fact that, okay, I have chronic pain. It's my problem. I have to own it. I have to, I have to do something about it because there's no doctor out there that's really going to solve this for me. So I'm going to get to that, but um, it's the, just having pain kind of makes me less of a candidate for surgery because, you know, you get a surgery like that and you're probably going to get, you're going to come out of it with different pain. You know, it might fix some of my pain, but it might actually create new pain that I didn't have before. And so it makes it kind of questionable as to whether, whether there'd be a benefit in um, helping my upper neck by fusing it um, because I could end up with, I, I could still be in pain. Um, like I am now. So yeah, for now, I'm not getting a fusion surgery. Um, I, I wasn't really considering it, but I, I really did want to know. I didn't want to just sort of say, oh, I would never do that. I wanted to actually go through and set up the consult and have some, some kind of relationship with some of these surgeons so that if I did, you know, in the future want to go that route that I, I would already have sort of done that. So, um, so yeah, if you're that far along, you know, <laughs> I, I get it. It's, it's the surgery is a very tough decision. Um, I really feel for young people. Um, I am, I think one of the saving graces of my condition is it didn't really develop until my late thirties. So I'd already kind of been through college, um, and had all my fun and sort of got into my career and now I'm sort of mid career. So I'm in this phase where I'm kind of, you know, I'm a manager, I'm sort of helping people collaborate and I'm kind of overseeing things and it's, it's kind of a cushy job. Like it's obviously still hard and it requires, you know, my attention and time and all those things, but it doesn't require my body as much as it did when I was in my twenties and had to be out there actually doing a lot of more physical work and, you know, being in, in an office in person and, um, out in, in doing field work, things like that. So yeah, I do really feel for people that have CCI, uh, in their younger years because um, you just don't have much time. You, you didn't get much of a chance to get your life started and it's going to be much harder for them to, um, to fit into kind of the life I have where I, I'm able to kind of work given that my job is mostly sort of desk work and I've made some adjustments to like make that tolerable for me. Um, and I also have a lot of flexibility with my schedule. I've kind of already proven myself as, as far as in the industry and you know who I work for that I can get stuff done um, even though I have CCI <laughs> so um, so that's, that's what I want to say about that um, and and of course people that are um, in really bad shape um, I never describe myself that way but there are definitely people with CCI that uh, are basically bed bound uh, which is really sad and if you're watching this video I I'm sorry I um, a lot of the things I'm going to talk about you're going to be like, well, this is never going to work for me because I just can't, you know, I'm not like Jaden. I can't do this. Um, so yeah, I, I really feel for you. Um, and I understand like that the surgery is, you know, is, is something that is potentially a, uh, an option that would help, you know, that would allow you to do a little bit more and 
get through life um, with, with a better quality of life. So, but yeah, what I'm going to talk about, I guess, as far as things I've done, it's sort of for people that have, uh, I guess, the, the more chronic pain flavor of CCI where you've got, in my case, I'll talk a little bit about like my symptoms just, just to give the context. So, so my symptoms, um, it's about 50% nerve pain and headache, um, which, which is technically called occipital neuralgia. Um, it's common people with, you know, migraines and stuff to have them from occipital neuralgia. So basically the occipital nerves run up the back of the head and they start at C2. So you can imagine if you have a lot of instability around the C1, 2 area, um, that nerve is going to get unhappy. And in my case it did. And so I get sort of a, a dull pain. Um, it's kind of a dull achy pain, um, that goes up right up the back of my head. Uh, and it sort of, yeah, you know, through the base of the skull and then up. And so, so that causes headaches and just, you know, a feeling that I'm, I, I'm never really relaxed. And the only thing that makes it better is to lay down um, or wear a hard collar, which sort of takes the, the pressure off things. So that's 50% of the pain. The other 50% of the pain is um, a muscle pain, really. It's sort of suboccipital muscles, uh, which are the upper neck muscles that kind of... Um, help to uh, control the, the C12 area. So the reason that they're really upset and sore and overworked is because of course the ligaments are supposed to do most of the work, right? Ligaments keep joints in check and the muscles obviously help to move things and provide overall stability, but the muscles aren't supposed to actually keep the joint together. The ligaments job is to keep the, the, the joint together and from moving too far. So in my case, like and people with CCI, like because those ligaments are not working properly, the muscles have to do all of the work and they get sore. And so you, pe people talk about heavy head, they talk about uh, muscle spasm, uh, pain that's, you know, skull base pain or, or you know, this, there's this band of muscles called the suboccipitals. Um, they get really tight and I love to get, you know, them kind of worked on, obviously nothing too heavy because I don't want to make things worse. I do need that sort of muscle tension to keep everything together. Um, but I, yeah, when I lay down and I don't need those muscles, because again, they're, they're used, they're being used to hold my head up and to keep the joints like together. Uh, so when I lay down, I generally, yeah, the muscle pain kind of abates. Um, the nerve pain is interesting because it's more, it's more kind of a flare up issue. So usually at the very start of the day, like when I'm getting out of bed, I don't have any nerve pain. Which is, which is phenomenal, it's great, it's, I love it. But it always, like without a fail, like every day, um, there's always nerve pain that will start to begin as I fight gravity, as I have to hold my head up. Um, I did experiment with using a brace or, or a, a hard collar um, that's really only recommended for sort of post-surgical recovery. Um, but you, you know, you can use them for short periods of time, it's safe. Um, you don't want to rely on it for long periods of time because then the muscles will actually get lazy and I don't want that. I want to be able to hold my head up for the rest of my life. So, uh, but yeah, I, I found that the nerve pain was a heck of a lot better when I wore the collar all day, because of course that was keeping the, uh, the weight of the head from, uh, you know, the collar was holding up my head basically instead of the, the neck. So, yeah, so basically those are, those are my symptoms. I do not have any of the um, the more extreme and scary symptoms um, that kind of relate to spinal cord and, you know, cerebral spinal fluid and flow and, you know, brain issues, things like that. So people that have those, um, you know, they have a different uh, and, and I would say a more a, a much a much more difficult to manage uh, flavor of CCI than I do. So it's, it's every case is different. Obviously, I can only speak about mine because that's what I know. Um, but if you're still listening, then you're curious. So I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you kind of what I know. So, um, all right. So that's sort of a little bit about me and my, um, you know, my CCI. Uh, it started, I guess, um, darn near 10 years ago. Um, and I went through just recapping a little bit. You can watch the earlier videos. There's a lot of detail, but basically kind of started with the usual like conservative care, you know, got an MRI, did lots of physical therapy. Um, nothing really made me get better, which was very frustrating because I'm a very systematic person and I was kind of like, I'm going to solve this and, you know, do this and do this. And then, you know, like I was prepared to fly across the country to see specialists and stuff. I was very motivated and I was really thinking I will find something and I'll fix this. 
So I did do uh, quite a bit of uh, regenerative medicine. Some of it was, was in a more sort of mainstream type clinic that also did a lot of pain management. Um, so that I had some prolotherapy and I had some nerve blocks as well to kind of confirm that it was actually C12 that was the issue. Um, so that was helpful. Um, the treatment was at best temporarily beneficial. It really wasn't giving me any, any durability. There was, there was really no long-term improvement at all. So that was quite frustrating. And I was having to fly, you know, across the country to get it. And it was not covered by insurance because it's regenerative medicine, all of that. So um, I also went ahead with doing the uh, stem cell treatments. I did it twice. So it's called the PICL procedure. It's only done in one place in the world, in Denver. Um, they, it, you know, it's a, probably the, the premier treatment for CCI, it's sort of the most advanced, um, the, you know, the, the newest kind of non-surgical treatment that is available. Um, but again, it's, it's kind of the same problem as the fusion surgery. It's like, there aren't really a lot of treatments done. They're extremely expensive. Um, and so they only have the population of people with CCI getting these that can afford it, uh, that are uh, willing to travel to Denver and, and go through with it. It's, it's a pretty, it's not an invasive, well, I guess it's invasive because they, they inject the stem cells through the back of your mouth, uh, but it's not, it's not like a surgery or something. So you don't have to, you know, you're basically in and out and it's sort of like one day of downtime, if that. Um, so those treatments, uh, again, it's sort of like, because there's not a lot of data, it's sort of anecdotal. Um, it's also a private clinic doing it. Um, so they're not necessarily sharing all of the data. So we don't really know. And, um, but, you know, I encourage you, like if you have CCI or you think you do, like look at it, think, decide if it's for you. You can watch my video. I'm pretty open about my, my opinions about it. I think pretty, pretty balanced about it. And I don't regret doing it. Um, it did nothing to help me though. And I spent a lot of money and wasted, well, I don't say waste time because I did learn things and I learned that it didn't work. So I don't have to waste my time doing it anymore. Um, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, stem cells. I, I, I think we just don't really know enough about it. And I think you have to, um, and I'm going to get into this part of this video, I guess this, this idea of like transitioning from chasing after treatments like oh maybe this will be the thing and maybe this and you get ideas from people on facebook of all places and stuff like that and and i've kind of moved away from that mentality i mean i really aggressively kind of followed that but i started to realize that you know you have to it, it's there's two things i mean there's the fact that all of those um treatments um cost money some of them are very expensive, uh, especially things like stem cells or any kind of injections that you're getting. Um, they're a lot more than some of the more conservative options like, you know, good PT physical therapy um, or, uh, you know, getting, you know, seeing like seeing a neurologist or just basically getting help from more local resources. Um, when you're traveling and you're getting these injections and you're getting regenerative um, treatment, like it's you're, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars. So you have to look at the fact that, okay, it's a lot of money. Um, if it works for you, great. If it's not working, and like as it was in my case, you have to start to question, okay, like is this, is this you know, at what point do I say enough is enough? Um, and the second part of kind of moving on, I guess, from this sort of treatment, uh, chasing treatment approaches, it's the mental part. Like it, it's a real letdown when you put a lot of, faith and you know you get excited and you get um i don't know you you like it does something to you when you're always looking for the next doctor or the next treatment or you're excited when you know oh fine you know they're going to give me another procedure thank god because what else you know like like what else do i have to live for like i don't I mean that's kind of an extreme view, but i think people can appreciate that like you, you want something like what's next because I'm in pain and I have, you know, symptoms and I, I can't go on like this. And um, you get in this kind of mental cycle where you're always looking for the next thing. And um, I just realized that like, no, I don't really want to live like that. Um, I don't have to. Um, and I'm not closing my mind off to uh, new treatments or options that might become available. But I am not chasing it like I used to. I've kind of said, okay, I'm done with that. 
I don't want to be traveling all over the place to get treatment and I don't want to be spending tens of thousands of dollars every year. You know, I mean, the tax write off is nice, but I mean, you have to spend the money. <laughs> and, you know, it's like I do want to have like a retirement savings, like hopefully. So I can't just keep spending all this money every year that I don't really have. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's where I that's sort of the point where I where I got to with with kind of moving on from that. So anyways, okay, I'm going to segue now because I get on these tangents uh, of talking about various opinions about things, and, but I, whatever, I mean, if, if you're, if you're still here, you're, you know, you obviously enjoy some of my dry humor. Um, but yeah, so just talking a little bit about, uh, things, things I do and I just sort of share and I have no structure to this. So I'm just going to ramble for a little bit and then I'll eventually stop. Um, but I guess I'll just start off with some, some basics. So, um, I, I'm convinced, uh, in my case, there are really two, the two most important things that I have to do to live with CCI are to get, um, adequate sleep. And, and I mean, not great sleep because I don't think I'll ever really get great sleep because I'm in pain all the time. And I, you know, my neck is cracking and clunking and all of this, right? But you need to get adequate sleep and because sleep is when your body is recovering and you're not having to hold your head up and it's going to keep you mentally sane because you'll, you know, you just, your brain needs the chance to rest and you need to be able to turn off the, the pain signals. And you, you can you can learn all kinds of stuff about pain science and what it has to do with the brain and whether it's real and like, I don't, that, like that's a whole other tangent. But, but sleep is this great anecdote because like you fall asleep and it all goes away, right? Because you just don't feel it because the brain is, you know, off essentially. Um, and, you know, physiologically as well. Like, yeah, you're not having to use those muscles to hold your head up. Um, so yeah, so sleep is, is number one. Um, and, I'll, and I'll talk in more detail about how I've made sleep work better for me a little bit more consistently. It's never perfect. But uh, the second thing uh, that's absolutely essential is daily exercise. Um, I um, used to be, well, actually, I mean, going way back, I used to be a fat kid, actually. So I've, I've lost about 100 pounds in my adult life uh, from, I think, when I graduated high school. Um, but one of the things I, I guess, learned through that is just that I am much, um, I'm much more of a effective person when I do some kind of exercise every day. Um, and it's not just weight management. It's, um, you know, it's the mental health part of, of just getting out, out of the house or out of the office or like devoting some time. And in my case, I do it, uh, on my own. I, I don't, I don't really... Um, I'm more of an introvert, I guess. And I, and I like the solitude of just like, okay, I go out usually in, usually outdoors. I live in Southern California. So I have that luxury of being able to go outdoors every day of the year, just about. Um, and so it's sort of, yeah, there's this sort of mental health component of like, this is my time. I get to go and use my body in another way that is not utilized, you know, when I'm home working or if I'm doing housework or whatever, like it, I am just out there and I'm in, you know, out in nature uh, or, you know, I, I do go to a gym as well. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's important. And, and the other piece of it is that you have to stay strong. Um, and I kind of learned that from, um, so, okay, I've, I'm trying to like somewhat organize this to make it coherent, but yeah, so sleep and exercise. So maybe what I should do is, is go through those in order and then I can, I can sprinkle in some other things, but those are the, by far the two most important things, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about sleep. Um, I have definitely noticed uh, my symptoms and my happiness and all of that. It's it's very tied to how well I sleep, and so I've I've really worked on that, and I, for the most part, figured it out on my own. But I I've had some I've had some help from uh, different folks in sort of the medical realm, um, not just doctors, but other, other providers as well. So I, yeah, so one of the things that, um, works really well for me and you may not be a believer in it, but like I wasn't either until it, like I basically, I started doing it and then, um, I, um, 
you know, when I, whenever I've not done it, it's, it's always been a, a big sort of rebound backwards. So I take a uh, muscle relaxant, uh, every night. Um, and, uh, it's a low dose, um, and they're kind of reluctant to prescribe it, but, um, the neurologist that I see, I, I see a neurologist once a month, um, at this point. I mean, I, you, I feel like if you have CCI, you, you gotta have somebody like that, that cause you gotta get prescription renewals. If you're taking anything, you've gotta, you gotta have somebody that can provide some sort of basic medical, um, care. And, you know, it could be a primary doctor if they're smart. Um, but generally for most of us, we have, um, a neurologist or maybe a rheumatologist or, um, somebody that understands like joints and, you know, nerves and whatnot. So, yeah, so I take a drug called Flexeril or Cyclobenzaprine, um, which is really only meant to be taken for 10 days and I've taken it for five years. So, <laughs> um, I have, um, uh, it's interesting cause I I've gone through phases where I've said like, okay, I don't need this stuff anymore. And I don't believe in medication because I don't, well, I mean, I guess I do now because I've continued to take it, but I didn't used to really believe in, like, I was like, no, the body can make its own treat, you know, it can heal itself. Like, you don't need to be taking all this pharmaceutical stuff, but I take, uh, five, uh, yeah, five milligrams of, um, of flexural, uh, at bedtime or maybe, no, maybe it's 10. It's actually 10. Yeah. I take 10 milligrams. Um, and it's basically what I find is that if I wake up in the middle of the night and I've taken my flexural, um, you know, I get up, go to the bathroom, whatever, and I get back in bed and I fall asleep. No problem. Um, and you know, any number of things, it's usually getting up to, to pee or whatever, but like if anything wakes me up, uh, and I've taken my muscle relaxant at bedtime, uh, I fall, I fall back asleep and I sleep the whole night. And my life functions so well. <laughs> I mean, um, if I f forget to take it or if I'm on one of these, I've done a couple times where I've gone off it for a few months just to kind of see like, okay, can I, can I do without this drug? Cause I really don't want to be taking a drug, you know, my whole life. Um, then what happens is that I generally, um, I fall asleep. Okay. Uh, but if I get up in the middle of the night, which I usually do, at some point, um, I can't get back to sleep because I feel the muscle tension. So basically, yeah, this, I take this low dose muscle relaxant, um, and they've even tried to get me on other drugs. Um, uh, there's a few others that, uh, are more of a long-term, um, option for people with, um, you know, different conditions with the muscles and, um, spasticity and whatnot. And so I've tried these other drugs and none of them work for me. And I've tried it like, I don't want to say all of them, but uh, like all the ones that are not sort of a thousand dollars a month. Like I've tried all of the old fashioned muscle relaxant and only Flexeril works. And I don't know why I can't explain it. Um, they, they tell me that it, it also does, it works kind of like an antidepressant. It also, um, helps with, with the brain, which is linked into like how you experience pain. So there might be something to do with it's doing something in my muscles, but it's also like doing something in my brain and, um, and flexural has been around for a long time. So, you know, it's got a good safety record. Um, and I think there are, there's some off label uses of it for people with, um, fibromyalgia and whatnot. So, yeah. So my, you know, the last two doctors I've had, they're, you know, they're pretty happy to prescribe it and they tell me it's a pretty low dose and they're not too worried about it. But when I talk to other doctors, they're like, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't, you know, like you shouldn't be taking that for, you know, and whatever. So I, yeah, so I take a muscle relaxant. Um, I also have a really good pillow um, and that takes a little bit of trial and error and, and it sucks because pillows are expensive and you kind of have to go through a bunch of them to figure out. But I, I need something firm. Um, I actually have a memory foam pillow. Um, I'm not entirely happy with the, the, They kind of make the, with this wave in them and it's not quite perfect, but yeah, it's so much better than a, a pillow that is soft. Um, and I think that just has to do with like, I need something that will push up against the, you know, the vertebrae or, you know, the, the spine basically and, and the head and like support it because if it's too soft, um, then my muscles are still having to kind of turn on a little bit at night. Um, so yeah, so also, yeah, really good pillow. That's so important. Uh, for your 
you know, if you have any uh, muscle tension, which you probably do if you have CCI. Uh, and then another thing with, with sleep um, is basically, uh, um, it's kind of making sure that, you know, that you, you know, yeah, that you try to make the room as dark as possible. Like in, in my case, I have a, an eye mask. Um, and, um, oh, let's just stop. I think I'm gonna have to start again. Yeah, no, it's still recording. My computer just fell asleep. That's so weird. Um, okay, so something else to keep in mind with with sleep is um, you wanna you wanna do things like make the room as dark as possible. I mean, if you can tolerate like wearing an eye mask, I I do, and so I wear an eye mask because uh, I live in the city. There's a lot of street light. It's really it's impossible to make the room like totally dark. Um, you can also get a soft collar um, that. Um, gives you a little bit of stability and kind of keeps your neck in alignment. I, I find that I don't wear that every single night, but I do sort of add it in, uh, you know, if I feeling particularly sore or I don't know, just, I just sort of throw it in once in a while. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's safe. I mean, it's a soft collar. You, your muscles are still having to like do some of the work and you're laying down. So it's not like you're defeating the the muscles by wearing it. But yeah, they're kind of, it's kind of like you, I, I describe it as the, the sort of court case neck collar. It's that sort of band that goes around your neck. Um, but it's not like the, the, the formal like cervical collar, you know, that's made out of plastic and has all the chin piece and everything else. So yeah, so you could look at that. You could buy them at a drugstore. I think they're like 20 bucks. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my um, sleep stuff. But yeah, if I'm sleeping well, uh, and really trying to, um, you know, get quality sleep and consistent sleep, then my symptoms and my sort of quality of life is much better. Um, okay. So on the exercise piece, um, I think that there, there may be a lot of people saying, well, I can't do any exercise because, you know, everything's too unstable and like, and I get that. And you obviously want to be consulting with your you know, your medical team, like if it's physical therapists or doctors or whatever, but like, okay, what is it that I can do? Like, what, what are things that will strengthen me? Because everyone needs to stay strong. Like, I don't care who you are. Like, you have to stay strong. If you do not do that, you will, de you will deteriorate. Like, it's just how the human body works. It wasn't meant to be sitting around all day. So uh, in my case, uh, I, well, I was a marathon runner before all this happened. Um, so I was very used to like going out and like adding up mileage. Like that was just something I got into. And I kind of like the discipline of it. I like being able to, you know, track every day, like how, how much I was running and, you know, it all added up every week. And there was sort of a formula when you run a marathon, you got so many miles a week and it's like you build up and peak and all of that. So, um, so what I sort of shifted into was I sort of do a, a power walk, I guess you'd say, like, it's more than just sort of a, a normal walk, like, you know, walking a dog or something like I actually walk fast. Um, so I do get some cardio, um, but it's much lower impact than uh, road running, which is what I was doing before, which probably exacerbated my CCI. Um, but I didn't know that I had CCI. So, um, but yeah, so I do a lot of um, uh, power walking, and uh, when I say a lot, I probably average about six to eight miles a day. Um, and similar to my running training, like I sort of am very numbers oriented and I like adding everything up and tracking things. And so, yeah, I like to maintain a certain mileage uh, to keep everything moving. And I find that the walking, it's, it's kind of a nice rhythm for the neck uh, because it's, very, it's a very predictable rhythm uh, as opposed to the higher impact sports like tennis or basketball where you're, you know, you're moving around and everything is kind of dynamic and walking is very like, it's like a metronome, right? You can really control it. And then it's also just much lower impact than um, say like running on the road, which is like what I was doing for my marathon training. So, so that's kind of what I settled on. Um, and the other thing about exercise. So, you know, the walking is sort of a, uh, a very light cardio. Um, I, I, I don't, I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm sweating, <laughs> but I'm getting, 
you know, my heart rate's elevated. You know, my Apple Watch tells me that I'm working out, you know, and and it is, you know, it's burning calories and all of that. But um, so that's kind of what I, you know, get on the, the sort of cardio, um, heart and lung side of things. And then I started seeing a physical therapist uh, here in L.A. where I live. And it was because she treats people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is EDS, um, which is a, a, a syndrome of, of basically all of the ligaments sort of like hypermobility is a common feature of EDS. So your, your joints aren't, they're loose and you have ligaments that are weak kind of all over the body. Um, so I thought, well, that could be a really good therapist for me because I don't have EDS. They have in the past thought that I might have it, but I, I don't technically have it according to the, the way that it's diagnosed. Um, but because I have this hypermobility in my neck, um, which, you know, even like now the neurosurgeons have told me that, yes, you do, you have it. And it's, you know, it's considered CCI and AAI, um, the two different joint, to do two different levels of the vertebrae, um, that, you know, I, maybe I would benefit from seeing this, uh, EDS, uh, specialist, uh, she's a physical therapist and lives nearby. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I also started going to that. Um, and so one of the things she told me, it was very, like, I'll, I'll talk a little bit, a little bit about it because I'm sure if you've, if you've done any physical therapy, um, and I, I think I, I may have discussed this in another video, but, um, you know, if you go to those, uh, clinics that are very generic, they're set up for helping people with sports injuries and, you know, recover from surgeries and stuff like that is like, you sort of go, there's a couple of like actual physical therapists there. And then there's a sort of like whole armada of, of people that help you perform these exercises and, you know, and, the, and those people are generally like the least experienced, like medical people. They're basically there getting kind of some work experience and, you know, they, they use it to get hours to, to go into, you know, medical school or whatever it is they want to do. So, you know, so you go to these clinics and really like there's, there's maybe, I don't know, like 20 people getting treated and, and there's like three or four actual therapists, right? And so you're spending only a little bit of time with the therapist and your most of your time is kind of with these exercise people and they don't really know a whole lot. And um, so that like, if you're going to a clinic that's, you know, probably covered by your insurance and it's, you know, where your doctor recommended, like you're kind of going to get a very generalized physical therapy approach. And I've been through that. I've, I've actually gone through that like three or four times uh, where I've just been treated as sort of this, you know, normal mainstream patient and they don't really know what to do with me. I've been given a lot of the, um, you know, the chin tucks and the different ways that you can kind of strengthen um, the muscles at the back of the neck. Um, but none of that worked for me. And, and, and it's so common, I guess, with, with CCI that uh, regular physical therapy is, is kind of useless. Um, it just doesn't fix the ligaments, right? I mean, you, you, you know, yes, you do need to have strong muscles to make up for the fact that the ligaments are not doing, you know, the work. Um, but there's a limited, you know, like how, you know, you can make them as strong as possible. It doesn't repair the ligament, right? So I wasn't really making a lot of progress with that. Um, so anyway, so I, I, getting off the segue, I go to this sort of EDS specialist and I'm wondering, okay, like what's going to happen? Like, am I just going to get put through these chin tucks and, you know, the usual stuff and maybe a little, a little nice massage and some little nerve kind of release, um, and, you know, the first thing she told me is that, okay, like, you know, yeah, you have some hypermobility. hypermobility. Um, she found it in my shoulder. She found it, um, you know, in, in, you know, just some areas of my body that weren't moving the way, like, they weren't moving normally. I was like, well, that's very interesting. Uh, and so I was like, well, what do I do about it? Like, do I need to just keep doing chin tucks or whatever? <laughs> or, you know... Um, and she, she's like, no, she's like, this probably aren't going to help you. But like what you should do if, if you're somebody that's hypermobile um, anywhere really is like you basically have to strengthen the entire body. Um, and I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> so like I need to work on, you know, like everything, everything but the neck kind of thing. And she's like, basically, yeah, like basically your, your core, your back, your upper back, 
Um, all those things need to be as strong as possible. So you need to get a gym membership. You need to be like not, you know, going in and like lifting heavy weights, but you need to be doing resistance training. Like you can't just be, you know, walking eight miles a day or whatever it is you do. Like, you know, she was quite, she just like laid it out there, like, which is great. Like, I like, I like that honesty. It's sometimes a little hard to hear, but so she's like, yeah, you need to like, you know, yeah, you could, you could do your walking. And she said, maybe you should actually walk uphill because it'd be better for, uh, strengthening the front of your neck because she's like that's actually what you need to do is get stronger here than back here because this is the part that's going to give me the stability which i thought was interesting um and it actually kind of works because i do a lot of uphill walking now and i do feel like I, i'm getting i'm being able to recruit more from the front of my neck which is helping um but yeah she said yeah hands down like you've got to um add some kind of uh strength training uh whole body uh, because you you know you probably have other areas uh, like your neck that are a little bit uh, loose and you know because I again like and if you watch my earlier videos like I don't have a trauma that caused the damage to my neck ligaments like I, there's nothing I can think of that would be so significant as to cause ligament damage so it's got to be some kind of genetic thing. Um, I mean, there's people that have said, oh, maybe you have like some exposure to environmental stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's possible. But I, I think it's, you know, it's a, and, and if there was an exposure or if it's genetic, I mean, it's probably affected my whole body. And so I think the physical therapist is right that I need to not only be worried about my neck, because obviously it's hurting and that's what I'm focusing on, but the rest of my body has to stay strong. And why does it have to stay strong? Well, that's because um, if I'm going to start losing you know, if I'm going to be getting more laxity and ligaments elsewhere, um, the muscles around that need to be like ready to pick up the slack. And if those muscles are strong and I'm using them and I'm keeping them strong, like into my later, you know, middle age and older age, um, I will do better. And so why not, you know, why not take that approach? And so I really listened to that. It took me a while to kind of get the, get interested in going to a gym again. I mean, I, I, I'm not opposed to gyms. I mean, they are, they are kind of a solitary thing, which again, I said works for me because I like to do things on my own, but um, they're also indoors and they're, you know, they're busy when you try to go like at certain times and it's annoying. And, but I, yeah, I, I, I finally got sort of through any of those, uh, um, you know, excuses or whatever. <laughs> That's all they were is just excuses to myself of why I wasn't doing this. Uh, and I joined the gym I, and I've been going for about a year and I've actually got some, um, you know, I've been pleased with the, with the results, like as far as just like body image stuff, um, doing a lot of core work, doing a lot of upper back work. Um, uh, I get on a back extension, um, as much as possible. I'm doing planks every day. Um, that's helped so much with my core. Um, and it, you know, it all, it's, it's like little things. Like I still have neck pain. I'm not, I'm not going to come on this video and tell you, Oh, this made me like all it, it didn't. Okay. But all of those things combined, like the sleep and having that little bit of extra strength here and in my upper back, it just takes that little bit, that incremental little bit of tension off of my upper neck muscles that have been, you know, causing me issues for all these years. So, you know, it's like, it's frustrating that these things are just small and incremental, um, but they do make you feel better. They're, you know, they help with a little bit with your symptoms, but they also make you feel like better as a person. Like, I feel like, okay, I've gone to a gym. I'm, I'm working out. I can actually lift weight now. I mean, cause I've worked up to it and I'm careful and I always keep my chin down and all of, all of those things. Like, of course, if you're going to do any exercise program, talk to your medical people uh, before you do it. But, um, yeah, I, I feel good about it and, and it's a mental thing as well as a physical thing. So, so that's kind of what I want to say about that. Um, and you know, and another thing I live in a city, so I have the luxury of kind of walking everywhere, but I, I adopt this philosophy, what's called the gym of life. Um, so if you don't have a gym or you can't afford one, um, you know, the gym is your, you know, the world outside, like, and so I, uh, I actually stopped driving um, about three or I guess it was four years ago now. Um, I had a, I just, I had a car. I wasn't really using it. And I was, you know, I live in Southern California. I'm in the city and I can walk. And 
Um, so I just kind of, and I, and I work from home, so I didn't really need a car. And I found that if I didn't have the car, it meant that every little task, like going to Trader Joe's or going to Target or whatever, like all of those things that have to get done every week, well, I have to figure out how I'm going to do that, like on foot and I have to carry. And I'm, again, I'm careful about how much I'm carrying, but like I, I am able to kind of add all of those things together. So it's, you know, the gym, the walking, the carrying things back from the store, um, all of that kind of, it gives me something to do. It fills my day uh, because I don't have much of a social life, a little bit, but I've really had to cut that back just because it's, it's hard to have a social life when you're in pain. Um, but you, you can definitely fill your day. You can make it meaningful and you can feel satisfied with what you've accomplished. And, um, and I, you know, I do housework, um, live on my own. So I, I sort of have to do everything. And, um, that's a little scary when you think about having something like a surgery, cause it's like, oh my God, I guess I, you know, if I was going to have a surgery, I wouldn't be able to do everything. I would need help. Um, so anyway, so as it is now, yeah, so I get uh, exercise as part of my sort of normal life uh, because I don't drive uh, and uh, because I also um, enjoy uh, going out and um, uh, walking and, and also going to the gym. Because so that's kind of what I'm doing on that front. And then I do some, like the, the physical therapist, at this point, I kind of see her like once a month. Um, again, it's sort of a cost thing, you know, she's out of network and all of that. So I just pay cash for it, which again, if, if you have CCI, like you're probably going to find like any of the kind of really specialized care you need, you know, you're basically just paying for it and it's not really covered by your insurance. But, uh, but yeah, I see the therapist sort of once a month and she will kind of review how I'm moving and, you know, she'll, she'll want to see me perform like different exercises and kind of make sure that everything is being done properly. Uh, because I don't want to hurt myself. That's for sure. I've got enough problems. Um, but, and I also, she's also very good at, she has a, a special um, skill. I, I don't know where you get this kind of training, but she can actually um, find the nerves um, and she's really good at it. And so she can actually kind of massage the occipital nerves. Um, and it's, it's not, a, it's not like the, um, you know, when you get deep tissue massage and it's like really painful. I mean, it, it's nice, but it's like, it hurts. But um, this is a very like almost superficial, but she's able to sort of find these with her fingers and, and just sort of ever so slowly kind of work some of the tension out. And um, it's nice. It's, it doesn't last that long, which is why, you know, I don't go and do it like every week because again, if it's, if I'm paying a lot of money, and it's not giving me long-term benefit. Like it's hard. I just, I just don't want to do that, but I do like getting it done when I go for my sort of checkup every month and make sure that I'm, I'm moving properly and um, that my exercises are, you know, be, that I'm following like reasonably good technique and all of that. So, so I am kind of doing the, the gym stuff like under sort of her supervision, just based on like, she's seeing what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, so that's basically my long thing about exercise. But I mean, for me, again, it was easier because it had been part of my life uh, as a runner. And, you know, I was I was a swimmer and a kayaker and stuff before that. And so I'd, I'd always kind of had an exercise like regimen. And so when I got CCI, it was sort of just like adjusting that um, to something that I could fit into every day. And um, and I certainly have the time to do it. And, and I think you probably do too, because when you have CCI, <laughs> you lose a lot of the other things that you used to feel, you know, fill your day with uh, just because you're always dealing with your symptoms and your pain and everything else. So, um, so yeah, I mean, those are, those are the two big things. Uh, I guess uh, I can sort of go through some of the um, smaller, but not insignificant things. So I have a, uh, and I can, I think I can actually show you, I just have to like lift the camera up here. And um, so I have this, um, this funky desk, that um, it, it, it works as like a stand-up desk, uh, but this will actually, um, I wonder if I can, I better not do this with the, with the microphone on it, but the, um, it, it actually, that chair will go flat, so I can be laying down essentially like horizontally and the desk and the monitor will come up above me. So that's kind of, kind of like a dentist chair. Basically, oh, now, I've really, now I've really messed up. I guess I have to handhold the rest of the video. I'm going to edit this out. Just hang on a sec. Uh, now I'm 
now I have to do editing. What am I gonna do? Okay. Okay, so I, I think I recovered from that reasonably well. Um, <laughs> so a um, little tour of my desk, uh, but yeah, they're expensive. They're not as much as PICL, but they're expensive. I think it was about 7,000. Um, but I use it every day and I do, I do work um, full time, basically. Um, I have a lot of flexibility, which again, I said, because I'm mid-career, I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I'm able to um, accommodate like various things that I need to do to, to handle my CCI. But I, yeah, I basically kind of, I find I work like a split shift. So I get up in the morning, I sort of do a little bit of breakfast, whatever. Uh, and then I get into my desk and I try to do that like relatively quickly because if I wait too long and if I kind of just stay upright and, you know, I feel good because again, I've just gotten out of bed. I feel reasonably good. And, but if I stay upright too long, I get the nerve pain and then it kicks off the headache and it's harder to work. So I sort of get up, do a couple of things, have a shower or whatever, get in the desk, recline it 45 degrees. I don't like working completely horizontal. Um, some people do, and I think people like in wheelchairs and stuff, they actually need to kind of work that way, um, just with the gravity or whatever. But I like basically just taking off, um, you know, 50% of the gravity from holding the head up. And so I kind of reclined at about 45%. I had to sort of modify the headpiece as well um, with this particular desk. It's, it's the weakest link of it, I think. It does have a headrest. Um, so obviously they were considering like people with neck problems when they made these things, but, or designed them. Um, but it's not, it doesn't offer you the support you need if you have CCI. So you're going to have to come up with, um, some modification to the headrest. And in my case, I sort of have this sort of, uh, buckwheat pillow thing that, that it kind of adds space between my, uh, neck and the, and the, and the back and the headrest. Um, you can also use an ice pack because as the ice pack kind of melts, it, it sort of molds into that space. Um, so I'll do that in the evening sometimes, especially after I've like worked out and I'm, I'm a little bit flared up. I will put the ice pack and recline the desk. Um, but yeah, the great thing about these desks um, is they're totally adjustable uh, at all times. Like it's, it's, a, it's a electronic uh, or motorized, I guess. Um, so I, I can have it in standing mode as I do now. Um, and I can also, um, recline it. I can lay it down. I can sit it up. I actually almost never use it sitting up because that is my maximum pain position when I'm sitting completely vertical. So either I'm reclined a little bit or about 45. Sometimes I will work horizontally. Um, but I find I can't, I can't do it for very long. It's just, it's kind of a disorienting feeling to be totally flat. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very, because you can adjust it so quickly and easily, that's to me what makes it worth what you have to pay for it. Um, there are all kinds of other desks out there, um, but I don't think any of them, from what I could tell in my research, like are as good at being able to adjust them really quickly, really easily. So I don't, like I could be in the middle of a meeting and I was like, I'm going to stand up for five minutes and zip, zip, and I'm good to go. Um, and everything moves too, the, the cabling and all of that, it's all connected. And so, yeah, so maybe I'll do like a, a little bit of a, a additional video. I realize I'm getting close to an hour here, so I do need to wrap it up, but I wanted to show the desk. Um, like it was kind of a little bit of a haphazard way of, of showing you, but yeah, I'll, I'll do another video, uh, maybe a shorter one, just, um, highlighting the, how I use the, the workstation. It's, it's actually a workstation. It's not just a desk. Um, but I call it a desk, whatever. Um, so that is definitely something that helps me because most of my work is computer work and a little bit, a little bit of in-person meetings and stuff, but it's, it's generally, I would say like 95%, uh, computer screen, um, some, some video calls and stuff. And I, if I have a video call, I tend to stand up because you do look kind of weird when you're laying in this desk, like, and your chin is kind of doubled and stuff like that. So I tend to stand up. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, uh, another thing that I've brought into the mix. Um, and I mean, there's a, a whole bunch of other smaller things. I mean, I think, um, obviously eating well, staying happy. Uh, I, I met, um, actually was in a, uh, a hotel like uh, bar or something years ago. I was in my early thirties and I, I met this uh, 
this doctor that I later found out was actually a very famous doctor. I, I, I obviously don't watch enough TV or whatever because the bartender was like, you know who that was? And I'm like, no. It's <laughs> like, oh. Um, but I, I it was just, you know, we just were chatting and he, I, he could obviously tell I didn't know who the hell he was. So he was, he was quite pleased with that, I guess. And he, he was just asking me like what I did for work. And, you know, I was like, oh, I do, you know, this is what I do. And, and he, he uh, and I was asking him like, well, what do you, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a physician. And, and so I, one of the things as like, as we got talking, uh, cause it was just like, it was an interesting conversation is, is, uh, I said to him, I said like, okay, what, like, you know, I am a young guy, I'm, you know, 32 or whatever I was at the time. Like, what's your advice? Like to, to somebody like to live a long life and, you know, like what, what is, what is the, the key to health? You know, cause I was just like, you know, this know nothing uh, younger guy that didn't really care about doctors or any of that. Like nowhere near like where I am now, where I have all this experience with the medical system. I might've had a very different conversation with the guy, but I was like, yeah. So like, what are your things? And he, uh, he said three things. Uh, uh, and this is coming from somebody who, who I guess is a fairly well-known doctor, but he said um, that you have to uh, eat well, stay active and be happy. And that that's all you had to do um, to basically have a, a healthy life. And, and it really, like, I've never forgotten that because it's, it's you know, maybe cliche or whatever, but it's so simple. And when you think about it, it's like, yeah, I mean, if you can do all of those things and whatever life deals you, like if you end up with chronic pain or, you, you know, like there are certain things like cancers and stuff. Obviously, they're going to change the nature of, of your life. But, uh, you know, I think if, yeah, if you can uh, eat reasonably well uh, because, you know, you are what you eat and um, it, it matters like what you what you eat is, especially when you have, um, if you have any inflammation or whatever, it's, it matters a lot. You know, I, in my case, I don't think I have much um, inflammation. I have more just like muscle spasm and stuff. But um, being active, I mean, that is key uh, from my perspective. So I think he was right on there. And, and then the mental side, like you have to stay happy. You have to have a reason to get up every day. Um, and you have to just feel like life is worth living. And all of that is like, it, it can't be underestimated how important that is. So I think, yeah, if you have CCI and you, you kind of are going to have to come to terms with like, okay, how am I going to live with this? Because there are limited options as far as like what I can do to treat it. Uh, and eventually I'll exhaust those options and I'll get to where Jaden is, where he has to kind of like, okay, what do I do? How do I live with this? So, um, but yeah, staying happy is, is, is so important. And so figuring out a way that you can, uh, feel useful, uh, whether it's a job, whether it's, you know, helping family or whatever it is you can do. Um, and if it involves, you know, getting one of these desks so that you can do, you know, the kind of work I do or, or somehow adjusting your lifestyle and your career to be in a more supportive position where you're not having to hold your head up all the time. Um, those are all things to think about because making those changes will make you happier because you'll feel like you're, you're contributing, you're being productive, you're doing something, people need you. Um, so don't get discouraged. Uh, there's always, there are always ways to contribute. Uh, and just because you have chronic pain and, you know, you, you maybe you don't have a lot of social activity going on because you don't really want it. Like that's kind of my perspective. Like I do have it and I know that I need to be social, uh, and, and I, it's important, but I don't have a lot of motivation to do it because it's just like, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't be standing for hours and hours and, and, you know, and then obviously people don't want to listen to you complain about your neck or whatever. So, <laughs> so I just sort of, you know, I've really compartmentalized that. Maybe I'll do a little video about that, about, you know, social stigma and, and how you can kind of, um, I sort of pace myself when it comes to social things. So I don't do a, like, I, I know that I have to do some of it because I, I mean, I live alone. I work alone. I have to have something social, but I definitely pace myself. So I don't overload myself socially uh, because that I would just find very stressful on my body and, and I just wouldn't be as happy of a person. So I, I pace myself. Uh, but I identify things that I can do on my own in the comfort of, you know, my, my workstation or like whatever it is that I can do where I can limit the amount of pain I'm in and I can do something and feel good about it. So, 
So that's what I would encourage everyone. I think I, I'll kind of end there. I'm, I'm sure I'm darn near an hour now. Um, and I've rambled on for long enough. But yeah, I've talked, uh, you know, uh, about two main things uh, throughout this episode about the importance of sleep and recovery. Um, I think that's not to be underestimated. And if you're not sleeping well, it's definitely not helping with managing your CCI. So find a way to improve it, uh, whether, whether that's, you know, in whatever way you can. And I've explained sort of what I've done. Um, staying active. Um, you have to stay active. The body is not meant to be doing nothing. <laughs> um, but again, it's depending on where you're at and when you, um, got CCI and how many years you've, you know, been less active because of it. Like you're going to be at a different starting point than me. I mean, I ran the Boston marathon in 2018 <laughs> and then my, all of my CCI stuff came crashing down on me, but I was in pretty good athletic condition. And so I was able to kind of maintain some of that. Um, I haven't been running since then, but, uh, I do the walking and I am now doing some strength stuff. Um, and you know, and it's, it's been helpful and I feel I, like I am getting stronger. And I want to maintain that. And I would encourage you to um, do what you can and, and don't, don't say you can't do something. Like, is, is there a way I could do this? How, you know, how could I build strength without jeopardizing you know, my condition? Um, and talk to your physical therapist about it. Talk to your doctor about it. Like, because staying active is going to be so helpful for you. Um, and, and then the last thing, I mean, it was kind of spoke about, like, in addition to all these little micro adaptations and lifestyle things um but just being happy like doing it whatever it is you need to do to, to to stay happy and motivated and um that will also really help you uh manage your symptoms um because you know if if you combine you know physical symptoms and pain and all that with depression um then you're not going to be it's just going to be so much harder to get through life and so if you're in that place um see what you can do to kind of work on the happiness piece um because we can all you know we can all do better when we're happy uh i don't think anyone would deny that and um, uh, you just need to figure out what is it for you that's going to help you uh, be happier uh, even though you you know you may have some horrible symptoms and all of this like there there must be things that you can um just think about every day and and work at um being happier and uh, trying to live the best you can with uh, what you have to work with. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, it's perfect. I'm exactly an hour. I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing given the little mishaps that have happened. But yeah, I do have planned a couple more episodes. Um, I don't know how much more I have to say, but I mean, if you have questions or you, there's things you'd like me to go into more detail, please leave the comments so that I can... Um, I can think of some ideas and maybe create a few more videos. Um, but I kind of getting to the end of what I think I have to offer at this point. Um, but I, yeah, I think I can make at least one or two more. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about my surgery as well. Unfortunately, it's still kind of moving its way through all the um, insurance and all that stuff. So, um, but I, yeah, I will be able to share more of that. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for, for listening and for staying with me for the whole hour, if you're still here. Um, and yeah, please like the video. It will help with the YouTube algorithms. Uh, share it with others that you know or talk to that have CCI or are interested in CCI uh, that it may be helpful for, because I do want to try to, you know, get this out there just so that it can help you. It's another perspective, right? And I, I said, I think in the very first video, like there's a lot of content online about treatment which is great i mean it's great to have all these options and you know the us is like this market system and there's all these people innovating and coming up with new ways of treating it and but um there's not a heck of a lot about like what do people do that where the treatments don't work right like what happens if you fail the treatments so there's me you know and then there's there's a few other people i've i've seen and come up on my youtube feed now because of the great algorithms um but yeah, so I, um, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to try to um, uh, help people uh, like me who are sort of at the end of uh, what they're able to treat and are just trying to figure out um, how they move on. And um, that's kind of the goal. So I will see you next time. Uh, and um, yeah, hopefully it won't be quite as long of a gap as uh, between the last video and this one, but I have no, no guarantees. I mean, life gets in the way sometimes. 
but yeah, really appreciate it uh, for everyone that's uh, been following and, and watching the shows and uh, also leaving me comments. And uh, I keep getting them like even now, and it's been months since I made a video. So, um, so I think that's great. So uh, we'll see you all next time.